I was uh, living in an apartment, <laughs> living in an apartment above uh, an old mom and pop hardware store next to the expressway in Chicago. When it rained, water would seep in through the windows and pool next to the couch. My rent was only 450 bucks a month, but I only had $300 to my name. So I turned to Craigslist. The title of the job posting was Tissue Procurement Technician. <laughs> now, I had no idea what a tissue procurement technician was, and the posting wasn't very informative, but it did say that a background in science and a knowledge of anatomy was needed. <laughs> now, I studied biology in college, and I'd taken a class in anatomy. Not that I remembered much of it, um, but I applied because I needed a job. Uh, ten minutes into the phone interview, I still didn't understand what it was. So the woman on the other end said, what I like to call it is whole body disassembly. On the first day, they had me come in to show me what I'd be doing and to test my stomach. They brought a cadaver out from a freezer and put it onto the operating table. And as my coworker, Tracy, made the first cut, it occurred to me that the inside of a human looks a lot like the inside of a goat. I'd, I'd seen plenty of butchered livestock when I was in the Peace Corps, and so I used that image to drop a wall between the gruesome scene in front of me and my more weak-stomached conscience. And I wasn't even the most sensitive person in that room. Tracy is probably the most tender-hearted person I have ever met. When a squirrel fell out of a tree in her backyard and broke its leg, she brought it inside and nursed it back to health all winter. It would steal her granola bars and drink her coffee. I thought it was disgusting, but she thought it was just the sweetest little soul. <clears throat> so that's what it would be, me and Tracy, returned Peace Corps volunteer and squirrel doctor, working together, ripping apart human bodies to make ends meet. <clears throat> I'm sure you're wondering what this was all for. Let's say you're a knee surgeon. The way you learn to do surgery is you practice on cadavers, but if you're just a knee surgeon, you've got no use for the feet or the head or the torso or the thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> so there are companies out there that separate those parts out and send them out to doctors to practice on. At any one moment, Joe Smith's head could be in a nose job in L.A. while he's getting knee surgery in Boston and new hips in a nondescript building nestled among cornfields in the Midwest. <laughs> Tracy and I, we were the ones who did the separating. A strange thought occurred to me on that first day, that this is not how we're put together, but it's how we come apart. <laughs> on the second day, it was my turn to try, so Tracy gave me a scalpel and pointed at a spot in the middle of the cadaver's thigh for me to cut into. I recalled the strange sense of glee I'd felt years earlier in anatomy class when you'd tug on a tendon in a forearm and a finger would twitch. Like a body was coming alive with a wink and saying, that's the flexor digitorum superficialis. It felt like cheating, but this time I prayed that the body in front of me wouldn't twitch, wouldn't wink. The first time you cut apart a human body, you can't help but wonder if there's still someone in there. <clears throat> So I concentrated, excuse me, I concentrated on a piece of meat right in front of me. It reminded me of a rare steak. The job completely ruined some foods for me. I hardly ever eat steak now, and when I do, I order it well done. And I know all you purists are scoffing, but when you're salivating over your bloody tenderloin, I'm trying to hold back memories of cutting into the thigh of someone's grandmother with a scalpel and going at her femur with a hacksaw. Water chestnuts. I used to love water chestnuts. <laughs> but when you cut into the disc between a couple of lumbar vertebrae, the texture is eerily like chomping down on an order of Kung Pao chicken. <clears throat> See, the best way to cut apart a spine is to go in through the front, right behind the organs, because you don't have all these spinous processes protecting your spine. But before you do that, you've got to get all the organs out. <clears throat> and... You can't go in there with a scalpel because you might cut into something. Cut into the stomach 
and all the gas being produced by the bacteria that used to help you with digestion and now is eating you from the inside out escapes in the most disgusting fart I've ever smelled. <laughs> Cut into the colon and that last shit you never got to take spills out into your abdomen and guess who gets to clean that up with medical grade toilet paper? So we had to go in with our hands and separate the organs from the walls of the abdomen bit by bit. Some of these guys are 300 pounds. Have you ever been shoulders deep inside the blood, viscera, and feces of someone else's abdomen? It's awful. <clears throat> so once we got all the organs out, we'd cut into the water chestnuts between the vertebrae and cut around <laughs> as much as possible. But even that wouldn't do the trick, so Tracy and I would have to flip the body over with its back facing the ceiling and then fold the torso backwards up onto the backs of the legs to a satisfying snap. And then there's Grandma's torso hanging from her hips by a thin bit of spinal cord, the way a baby tooth dangles from a child's mouth by a little bit of gums. <clears throat> When the new year came around, I resolved I'd quit. When I told Tracy, she called me back and begged me to stay until I started grad school. I mean, the job was absolutely terrible, but we were a team, and I certainly couldn't let her do it all alone. Well, I stayed just a little while longer. But every day, I came home exhausted. I mean, the physical labor of ripping apart a human body is hard enough, but then you've got to deal with the inevitable emotions that go with it. Kung Fu movies make it look easy to snap someone's neck, but in reality, pulling a head from a torso is like pulling a soul from the river Hades. And when the bloodlust cools, you realize you're cradling a human head in your hands, and you get to deal with that emotion. So every day, I'd pull into the parking lot behind the hardware store where I lived, I'd climb the stairs up to my apartment. I'd throw my scrubs right into the washer and go to take a hot shower. As I'd feel the warm water dripping down my neck and pooling at my feet, I'd hold my fingers to my neck, feel my pulse. I'd run my hands through my hair, grateful that I, for one, was alive. And even better, I could pay my rent. <laughs>